professional installation. It's probably the most overused word nowadays in the aftermarket installation space. Everybody's a professional installer. So how do you decide on where to get your vehicle worked on? I mean, after all, when you're looking at your vehicle, most of the wires are completely hidden. So you have no idea what to expect on how the installation is done. In this video, we're gonna show you this Hyundai Ionic 5, which was installed by one of our competitors. We completely remove all the wiring and we're gonna go over all the mistakes that we feel they made on the installation. And then part two, which will come out next week, we're gonna show you how we completely redo the Hyundai Ionic 5 to our standards here at Safe Drive Solutions. Let's go. Okay, here we go. We actually are assessing this battery pack install that was done by one of our local competitors, our customer of ours. We've done their other vehicle, which you've probably seen in this video here, the Kia EV6 video. And flukishly, when we were done, the customer said he was really happy with how the installation was done and said, I'd like you to take a look at my other car. And as you can see, we have this PowerCell 8 that was installed in this vehicle by a local competitor. And I wanted to show you guys how this was installed. And we're actually gonna be fixing this installation completely. So a couple different noticeable things. The battery pack is Velcroed on top of the heater vent. Now, not really a good place to be installing a battery pack. It should not be sitting on top of a heater. Other thing is, look at the wires. The wires were actually rubbing here into the track, right? So these actually got caught on the track a little bit here. Here's the wiring. Hopefully you can see all that there. It's not nicely done like ours, right? So another thing here I would like to show you See the this seat, it's powered. It moves back and forth, as you can see here. And I don't know if you guys, you probably can't see this. The battery pack is hitting the power seat motor right now. So it was not installed in a safe spot. You're gonna end up causing damages to the motor so when we look underneath here right it's actually going to cause damages to the motor and now here look what else here these are the wires here they're sitting here they're bare they're not taped up nicely and this is how it's ran in this vehicle so we're going to be going through and actually fixing this whole installation for the customer and getting it done proper uh, we're going to get it installed in a safe place so the first things first, you need to assess where is that safe place that you can mount this? Because under the seat on this particular vehicle is not safe. So as you can see here, right, we're gonna remove this. So first things first, I'm gonna unplug these connectors here. And we're taking that out, the vehicle, like I said, wasn't installed correctly and it should not be mounted under here. And look, hmm. So where I like to mount it in these particular vehicles is this seat here on the Ionic 5 pulls forward and you can actually mount it safely underneath the seat here with no issues. And then you can actually run the wiring out here and underneath all these panels. So, So we want to continuously go through and uh, clean this all up. And uh, first things first, let's assess how it's wired all the way to the fuse box and uh, see how they wired it. Because I know how I like to wire it, so let's explore. Wow. Butt connectors. We don't use butt connectors here at Safe Drive Solutions. We solder all of our connections. So even if we were ever to use an actual uh, fuse tap of any kind, we would still solder this connection right here.
Okay, so we have the ground connection here for the battery pack and your power connection. So I want to explore how it's wired here and I want to make sure that you guys are seeing it raw so that I'm not editing it, I'm not making somebody look bad. I just want to see. So this is hooked up to an ignition of some kind. So I take this out right here. It should show. Oh, there's absolutely no fuse. So there's a 20 amp fuse hooked up to it and it was hooked up to uh, an, a blank. So let's take a look and see here. Was that an actual blank up top there? Yes, it is. So here's the thing. They hooked up a 20 amp to a blank. You don't know how thick the wiring is to support current to charging this. So they've hooked it up to a blank. I would never ever do this unless you're going to take the whole fuse box apart and you know exactly the pinouts on it. But right now here, as you can see right here, this is the fuse they used right next to it is airbag. This is empty right here. You don't know. So you have to remember that's a 20 amp fuse. How do we know the wire isn't like a 20 gauge coming out of the back? And if it's very small, it's not going to support that amount of current being charged all the time. So we're taking this out. That is gone. Okay. Um, I'll see right here. We use tie straps. They used, I don't know why they wouldn't use tie straps, the installation place, but they just used, uh, you know, one of the zips that you get from holding the wiring together in the package. Seems a little strange, but anyways, needless to say, we don't recommend hooking up to bolts like this. First off, there's plastic in between here and the ground connection. We recommend, uh, what we like to do is drilling directly into here, making full contact because here's the thing, if a car dealer is going to be servicing the vehicle in any way at all, and let's say they need to take the fuse box out, they're going to disconnect this. So now this is no longer connected to your vehicle, right? So now the battery pack's no longer connected. That's why we like to drill with a self-tapping screw and actually use a, a, a lot was not lock set a lock washer so that it makes really good contact. And this is how we even did the other vehicle for the customer who has the, because we did his EV6. That's why we do it that way. So we're going to continue uh, dropping the dash here and uh, move forward. <clears throat> So I just want to point out here, so as they ran it, no tie straps, no extra effort. You know, you easily could have ran it underneath here and had it come out underneath the seat. So that's the thing, right? Sometimes you're getting a deal, but you have to look at what you're getting when you're getting a deal. And a lot of people aren't looking at that. Now, I'm not saying that this particular customer was sucked into getting a deal. Um, I'm, not, I'm not trying to say anything like that. Um, from my understanding, he actually paid a fair price for it. But so you have to be careful, uh, when, you know, who's working on your car. <laughs>
So we just took, we're taking the A pillar off here. You always want to make sure. See, here's the airbag retainer clip. So usually what I do is I, you know, use my fingers or uh, a small pick to push these in. That way you can take it off without damaging. You always want to make sure that that goes back in place because this is what holds it in place. So when the airbag goes, this pops out and the airbag shoots out the side. <clears throat> so you see here, you know, it's ran behind the airbag, which is good. No tie straps at all. So, you know, a couple things missing there. Uh, the rear cable is ran. Uh, I'm not sure. It looks like it was ran. Uh, yep, it was ran over top of the airbag. So I think uh, we're, we're going to take that out and fix that for the customer. I know he's not paying us to do that, but I think that's the uh, right thing to do. We're gonna take this cable and run it in behind the airbag. Like so. Get it all proper for this customer. We'll continue removing our uh, the cabling that they installed for the battery pack. So there we go. Completely removed uh, the power cell eight, and uh, we're gonna. We're now that you've actually seen how we remove the dash camera from this vehicle, would you actually get? This dash cam battery pack installed by whoever installed this? Is this acceptable to you? Please leave comments down below. Part two is coming out next week where we're gonna show you how we properly install it into the Ionic 5. If you do have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. If you are looking for professional installation in Greater Vancouver or Greater Toronto, feel free to check us out, safedrivesolutions.com. Thanks again, cheers.